Hey soldier, let's get right tonight. Here I go! Guys, Soldier Only from Sports Nerd Web is here with the Sports, uh, excuse me, the Soldier and Fuchsia Only show. Yes, and I, I am Fuchsia. I'm very tired today. I am too. I actually just woke up from a nap, uh, probably about not even half an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, and I might take one and work on my puzzle, but we'll see. Yeah, and you need to take one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I got sleepy faced. Yeah, it is. It has definitely been a long, I would say, a couple weeks lately. It's been. Yeah, I'd definitely say a couple of weeks because I didn't even have last weekend off. I worked all last weekend. This is uh, it was nice finally having a couple of days off this weekend, uh, especially with uh, two games coming out two Fridays in a row mm-hmm. and a third one coming out this coming Friday as well. Yes, it's been definitely busy on the video game video game front. Uh, a couple couple Fridays ago, Titanfall two dropped. Uh, then just this last Friday, a couple of days ago, uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare dropped, and this coming Friday uh, will be uh, Dishonored 2. Mm-hmm. Um, so far, actually, for, before I get into those, I actually uh, I need to talk about the the big thing that has been going around Destiny related, and that is uh, the last couple of weeks. It, it's going to be wrapping up on uh, I think November eighth. I think that's what you said. Yeah, it's November 5th or 8th, but I want to say the 8th, I think. But anyways, it's Destiny's Festival of the Lost, uh, but it, is, it has now became known as Festival of the Cost. Mm-hmm. I don't know what Bungie was thinking by doing this. Festival of the Lost has turned into an absolute shit show uh, this year. Um, as I've said many times before in our podcast and all, you know, a lot of our other content on Sports Nerd Web, that... I wasn't a Destiny player until year two, uh, until uh, you know about six months ago. So I wasn't around for the la- for the f- for last year's Festival of the Lost. But I think what I heard is that players did kind of have some of the same issues with it. And what the big thing is is, I mean, players aren't aren't generally upset that there is microtransactions in the game. I mean, because Destiny has had that for a long time now. But w- <laughs> what's making it stupid is that you can buy these mystery packages remember i've explained some of this to you you can buy these mystery packages let's say you want you know the ghosty ghost the ghost with the uh with the sheet over it or or i didn't tell you about this one there's actually a devil horn ghost a Mm -hmm. ghost with little devil horns or maybe you want uh, you know some of these other masks and stuff like that you can buy these packages with real money through microtransactions but the shitty thing about it is is that it is still RNG based, meaning that it is still random based. So you can drop, you know, anywhere from twenty to a hundred dollars, and you might get the, you know, the shader that you want or the mask that you want or or whatever it may be. I have heard of uh, just listening to the different podcast Destiny podcasts and stuff that I do throughout the week. I heard people spending, you know, twenty bucks and they were able to get everything that that you know that they wanted. And I've heard of people spending upwards of 80 bucks and didn't get one of the things that they wanted, you know? And that there was even a lot of duplicates, you know? Like, they were even getting several of a mask or a shader or whatever it was that they didn't want. And I I just can't believe that Bungie actually went through with this. Um, Especially, I did hear once that there was kind of an issue like this on on the first year of Festival of the Lost. So, if it... It, it just it just boggles my mind because Destiny or excuse me Bungie definitely seems like that they usually learn from their mistakes they always it seems like that they're really good at listening to their community and riding the ship later on but if this was an issue last year and they still did again this year I don't know I mean Festival of the Lost for the most part was pretty enjoyable you know it, it was it was a nice fun just, entertaining event I just really hope she gets her broom back she was so sad. What is my existence in life? 
Yeah, there. Yeah, the the poor little robot frame at the tower that missed her broom, yeah, or that misplaced her broom, or someone stole it actually, because she's like she even somebody says somebody hid it. Well, because she, yeah, where we find it, it looks pretty hidden. Yeah. But she even says, is it is it a crime to steal from a frame? She even says something like that. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know, it, it, it's, 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 to, it's to the point of heartbreaking, like, I, if you sit there and listen to her. I think it would be really cool if they had a thing to where you can return her broom and get a reward. You know, like, you find the broom, you go out, you use it, it's really awesome, and then, as it starts to draw near the end of the Festival of the Lost, you have the opportunity to give her back her broom and be like, oh, hey, I found this, but it doesn't even let you interact with her. I think it'd be really cool and really beneficial, if, especially if they didn't really say that they were doing it, so then it's just, you notice one day you can actually talk to a frame, and you're like, hey, let's give them this broom, and then boom, you get some kind of... Like a shader, another yeah. shader or something. That, yeah. that that would actually be really cool. That would actually be awesome because remember how I got the super black shader by mm-hmm. by getting the candy from this person, taking them to that person and trading it for a different kind of candy and then taking that to another person in the tower mm-hmm. and so on and so forth until you get the the super black shader. So it would be really neat if they did that. One thing I'm interested that you say that now though, how you said it at the end of the Festival of the Lost because when you pull up the broom, in the menu, it says that that broom is going to be expired when Festival of the Lost is over. So we're not going to be able to use it. It's just, it's probably just going to just be gone, maybe. Or I don't know, you brought up a good point. Maybe we return it to him, to that frame at the end of the year, or excuse me, at the end of the event. And then she gets her broom back and all's well yeah. <laughs> at the tower once more. And then you don't have to hear her be so sad. Yeah. So questioning her existence in life. Yeah, it's really sad. It's like, if that isn't what broom, happened, broom. so what is it? Yeah, what does the broom say? Broom, broom. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, if that isn't what they do, what, you're just going to go to the tower when the event's over and she's just going to be gone and you never hear anything else from her? It's like, what, well, does no, she jump off probably... the ledge or something? Like, where'd she go? <laughs> no, I'm sure she'll get her broom back, because when we walked over to a different frame, even that frame was saying stuff, too. So she'll Not probably as much, get her but broom, yeah. yeah. She'll probably get her broom back, and, and then just kind of be non-existent to everybody else, because no one can actually really talk to her, and she's meant to just be background anyways. I would like to think she gets her broom back. <laughs> I would hope so, too. Maybe it's just the hopeless romantic in me, but... Maybe that could be it. Right. I, I would like to think she gets her broom back. But yeah, uh, other than that, Destiny, uh, you know, has still been great. A lot of fun to play. I'm actually really stoked. Uh, this coming week, Iron Banner is going to be returning. Uh, this month, actually last month was my first time participating in Iron Banner, and I had an absolute blast. And that was when Supremacy was the game mode. Uh, from what I understand, this uh, this coming Iron Banner, uh, it's actually starting this coming Tuesday, so in a couple days. Uh, from what I understand, it's going to be the control uh, PV- PvP game mode. So, um, that's what I'm spending the next couple of days, is uh, just training up for that, playing some, some control on my Hunter and Warlock, because those are my two characters that I like doing PvP with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, as far as uh, Titanfall 2 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, um, actually in both games, I'm pretty much about halfway through the, the single player campaign on both games. Uh, also on both games, I haven't done any of the multiplayer uh, PvP yet, uh, but both games are solid. I mean, of course, it, Call of Duty, of course, that's what you expect. Every mm-hmm. year a Call of Duty comes out, it's always got solid gameplay and first-person shooter mechanics. But one thing I will say about it is that that campaign is actually really intense. The story is actually really good, and I'm actually really involved and interested in it and eager to keep playing to find out what happens next. And that's the first time that has ever happened for me in a Call of Duty game. Mm -hmm. The Call of Duty games are always fun to play, like gameplay-wise, but they're always really light on narrative. Uh, Titanfall 2, it's actually pretty much the same thing because the narrative in that is also really good so far. I'm really liking the... I'm not going to spoil anything, but I'm really liking the relationship between the Titan and the pilot. Yeah. It's really neat. It's really neat to see how. And right off the bat, right at the beginning, there was a pretty emotional scene that actually kind of tugs on your heartstrings right at the beginning of the game and pulls you right in. I think it was really smart to have a moment like that right at the beginning of the game. Yes, it, and it came with a poster that I really enjoy that's hung up now. 
Yeah, you can check on uh, our Twitter at SportsNerd48 uh, or our Instagram at SoldierOnlyGaming. Uh, there's a picture of it up there. Uh, yeah, there was a really awesome poster that came uh, with the game when we got it at the midnight launch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing with all these games coming out. We've been going to the midnight launch. But they're no excuse me, yeah, excuse me. Release. Yeah, they don't like calling them midnight launches anymore. Excuse me, they're but early releases. On the west side, it's an early release. On the east side, it's still a midnight release. Yeah. It's just on our side, since it's 7, so, 8, Since one, it's like midnight, midnight Eastern, yeah. it's 10 our time. 10 our time. So then a lot of people on the west coast have been showing up to the places at a midnight release at midnight our time whereas they already handed everything out 10 yeah they're trying midnight to close. eastern time you know so yeah. it's 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 kind of one of those things where it's like if you're on the east side of the country you're still going to be calling it a midnight release because for you it is still going to be a midnight release release yeah but for us we're as um our, our time difference uh, yeah the time difference it puts it at 10 o'clock our time yeah it's it's 10 o'clock our time to where they they release it because it's you know already released on one s- side of the country mm-hmm. then. so because what just, it is is because it's actually a worldwide launch because yeah. w- you know remember games normally come out on tuesdays mm-hmm. but these last two games have came out on a friday because it's a worldwide launch mm-hmm. that's why those games have came out fridays instead of tuesdays like games usually do yeah. uh I had another thing I was going to mention about that game, and I'm totally brain farting right now, and I can't remember what it is. That happens to the best of us at the opportune moment. (laughs) Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. I'm pretty sure it had something to do with Titanfall 2. Maybe Call of Duty. I can't think. We've been still getting in some destiny between the two games this weekend. Yeah, it's it's been really hard to balance because... I really want to play all three of those games. <laughs> if I could split off into three different people somehow, that'd be if, great. <laughs> if only, if only. But what I'm really, 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 really excited for is the fact that you got me my own Fallout puzzle. I just have to finish my original puzzle before I can go to the Fallout. But I get the feeling the Fallout's going to be a lot easier because it's a lot less number of pieces, whereas the other one is... How many pieces is that one, the Fallout the, one? The Fallout one is 550, and the other one is 750. 750, okay. So yeah, it's, so it's not, it's as, quite, it's a not as quite it's, as big, yeah. It's around the same size, but the pieces look like they'll be a little bigger than what they are for the one I'm currently doing. I'm still so proud of myself for getting as far as I have, and I'm going to work on it some more. Aha! It came back to me. I remember what I was going to talk about now. Uh, I actually made a video, it's on the Sports Nerd Web YouTube channel, about Titanfall releasing right in the middle of Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. So what I was just going to say is that I'm really interested to see the sales numbers of these games. Because mm-hmm. uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, when it was announced earlier this year at June, back at E3, it was the d- most disliked video in YouTube history. So, And as we all know, Call of Duty is a huge juggernaut every single year that sells millions and millions of copies. And as we noticed, when we when we got the game on Friday, there was still a good turnout. Mm-hmm. There were still a lot of people there. So I'm sure it's still going to sell a lot, but I just have a feeling it's going to be one of the less... one of the more lower-selling Call of Duty games in a long time. There was more people at the Call of Duty early launch than there was at the Titanfall. Oh, by far. Mm-hmm. By far. And I would have expected that. I, I'm, I wasn't, su- wasn't surprised by that at all. I'm just really hoping that Titanfall 2 isn't doomed because of where it released. Because it already is a critically acclaimed game. The game's fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, most places are giving it 9s out of 10. If I had to put a, num- a number on it, I would probably give it the same. So, yeah. I fully agree with all the reviews that I've seen so far. But yeah, that's going to uh, do it for this week of the Soldier and Fusion Only Show. Make sure that you... Uh, Check out uh, the YouTube channel, the Sports Nerd Web Facebook page, or Spreaker.com slash user slash Sports Nerd Web, because we have our new podcast premiering tomorrow. That's our All Walking Dead podcast, Talking Decay, uh, and we'll be talking about all the episodes up until this point. Um, like I said, you can follow uh, me and Sp- Sports Nerd Web on Twitter at Sports Nerd 48. Check out my live streams at Twitch.tv slash Soldier Only. Follow me on Instagram at Soldier Only Gaming. You can follow her at Fuchsia Only. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. 
We love you all. Have a good week, and we will see you next weekend. Deuces.